Game 3 Eastern Conference Finals Pacers-Celtics resumes tonight on Saturday, 8.30 Eastern on ABC National TV. And we have a huge injury. Tyrese Halliburton is listed as questionable with a strained hamstring. I'm going to break down the impact of this injury, how I think it affects the game, and how we can play this game and still make some money tonight on Saturday. That information coming up free for you with deep analysis, side, total, player props, everything to get you ready for Eastern Conference Game 3 on Saturday night. Hi, this is Steve Merrill, wagertalk.com, right back here on Wager Talk TV. And first of all, happy Memorial Day weekend. Always keep a flag handy. Keep a little bit bigger flag handy on Memorial Day weekend here. And a quick thank you to all the veterans out there that are currently serving and have served. If you're a veteran, please comment below so I can personally thank you as well. And I know many of you read the comments. Weigh in and thank the veterans also, especially those, let's remember those that gave the ultimate sacrifice. We're able to talk NBA. We're able to talk sports betting and do it whenever we'd like here on Wager Talk TV because this great country has freedom and there's many that paid the ultimate price. So once again, this Memorial Day weekend, let's enjoy the games, let's enjoy family, have a nice cookout and a beer, but let's not forget what it's all about. Happy Memorial Day, especially to our current veterans, present and past. Please comment below and let me know if you're in the service so I can thank you personally. I do read all the comments and I reply back. All right, let's get to this game three. And as I mentioned at the top, a lot of uncertainty. Tyrese Halliburton injured his hamstring in the second quarter on Thursday night in Game 2. He came back, played, and left for good in the third quarter. Indiana went on to lose by 16, and he is questionable. I'm doing this video late Friday night. I held off as late as I could because I want to get it up early Saturday for you, as always. And he is questionable. And late Friday night, we did see the line start to go from 7 up to 7.5 in some sports books, which make me think some people think he's not playing. But here's the thing. If you really look at this point spread, Boston was an 8.5 point favorite in Game 2. If you factor out 2 to 3 points for home court, let's say 5 points total, that would make him about a 3.5 point road favorite. Historically, teams down 0-2 do very well in Game 3, and the odds makers usually bump it a couple points more. So just a regular line based on the uh, the 9 to 10 we saw in Game 1, that would be like 4. 8 to 9 would be like 3, and then you bump it even lower if Halliburton was fully healthy, this line would probably be like three. So the fact that it's seven, seven and a half late Friday night into Saturday morning tells me they're already pricing in the fact that Halliburton might not play. And if he does, he's not healthy. So if he's officially announced out on Saturday at some point, maybe it goes to eight or nine, but it's already inflated. And I know it's hard to pull the trigger with the shorthanded team, but boy, I keep saying it week after week, month after month, year after year now. If you've just blindly played the shorthanded teams in the NBA, you have made money over 70% of the time. We saw it with Game 3 in the Cleveland-Boston series last round. Celtics were in a good spot, and they took their foot off the gas when Mitchell was announced out, or Game 4, rather. I think that was actually Game 4 because he missed Game 5. It was Game 4. Boston went from like 9 to minus 12, and of course, we know how that turned out. They didn't cover, and it keeps working because it's so hard to play the shorthanded team, and it also keeps working because the odds makers and betting markets don't correct. They inflate the line higher, and Boston has been a team that's been known, as we all know, to take their foot off the gas in certain situations. Now, they didn't do it in Game 2, and we had a strong best bet on Boston for my clients on Thursday night at Wager Talk in Game 2 because I thought the fact they barely won Game 1 in overtime would remain focused, unlike the last three Game 2s this round in the Eastern Conference Finals last year, in which they lost Game 2. This time, they did not overlook their opponent. But I could see them coming in a little bit complacent here, especially if Halliburton is banged up or announced out. So there's different ways to play the Pacers here. I do think it's safer to play them probably first half. Currently, Indiana's plus seven, seven and a half for the full game. But if you look at the first half, it's only three. And that's because teams down 0-2 in game three do well at home, but they do even better usually in the first half. And it makes a lot of sense. They come out with the energy of the home crowd, coming in off the losses. And this is also a situation, since Indiana is the inferior team and might also be the shorthanded team, we want to shorten the time frame as much as possible. Over 48 minutes, the more talented team, the better team, has more opportunity to pull ahead. So I like shortening this to the first half with the Indiana Pacers plus three. Could also look at them first quarter plus one and a half, but I think the plus three is a nice number for the first half. So I do lean Indiana based on the situation. Yes, I wish I had more clarity on Halliburton's situation. But once again, as we've seen time in and time out, shorthanded teams overperform in the NBA. And the Celtics have had a tendency to overlook teams at time as well. So I do think this is a bounce back for the Pacers. If they're going to steal a game, it probably is game three here. I'm not going to be so bold to call for the outright, but I do think plus the points are worth a look. I'd take a look at the Pacers plus three first half, and we will keep an eye on the Halliburton situation to see if this line moves any on Saturday afternoon into the nighttime start. By the way, 
the importance of Halliburton, he's not only a great three-point shooter, third-team All-NBA, but he's the best assist man in the NBA this year. He really is the floor general, the quarterback out there. And when he was out this year, they were 7-6 and six without him. That's respectable, but the games were much lower scoring. If you recall, a few months ago, they went on a real underrun, and that's when Halliburton was off the court. Uh, so the total is tricky in this one. Uh, first two games in regulation landed 234-236. Uh, my rescore model is around 234 to 244, playoff adjusted 228 for game one. So that was a legit over. The last game was about 224 to 229. But when you fa- factor in the slower pace of the postseason, it got as low as 213 on my rescores. I run three different rescore models, a percentage, a pace possession model, and then I adjust it for a playoff intensity model in which we have lower scoring in general. So game two did hover down a little bit. Of course, Halliburton was out for the last quarter and a half. Uh, it still got over, but the pace was about where it should be. Um, so that makes this total a little bit tricky here for Game 3. It's currently sitting around 222.5. It's dropped a bit from the opener of 224. As far as the public, Pacers were a very public dog in Game 2, and that's another reason I really like the Celtics on Thursday night as a best bet. Public is actually leaning towards Indiana again here. Even with the Halliburton uncertainty, uh, Indiana is looking like a bit of a public dog again. Uh, but once again, I think the line is inflated, so it doesn't scare me off as much in this situation. Also, the public is on the over, which they basically have been every playoff game this season, so I don't read too much into that. Uh, but we did see a little bit of sharp money on the under. I think that was more Halliburton injury money. And once again, as I'm doing this video late Friday night for you to get it up Saturday morning, I told you that line this evening went from 7 to 7.5, but it's also started to drop back down to 7 so a lot of manipulation going on in the NBA. You know, there's really no key numbers in basketball. Obviously, if it's a football game, seven, seven and a half is a tremendous difference. But there is some consideration for seven in basketball, and that's because teams don't foul much once they're down by more than seven. Seven's kind of that cutoff if you keep fouling late or not. So it is interesting that uh, late Friday night, early Saturday morning, this line is hovering between both seven and seven and a half at different books. All right, Pacers first half, I think, is the best option here. Uh, but once again, a lot of uncertainty with Halliburton's injury. Let's look at some player props. So first of all, the adjusted series price, if you can find one. Uh, Celtics are now anywhere from 80 to 1 to 100 to 1. Take back is about 20 to 1 on the Pacers. Uh, I have no interest in Indiana winning for the next five at only 20 to 1. But I'm also not looking to lay a do- 100 to win a dollar. Uh, series price pretty much is not playable here in this one. Uh, by the way, this series could very well go 3-0 and be done on Monday, make it 4-0. And the Dallas-Minnesota series might not be as tight as we saw. Dallas trailed by as many as 18 in the first half, came back to win Friday night by one. That's now a 2-0 series. Got to figure the NBA would like one of these to go at least five, six games. So maybe Indiana will be getting some favorable foul calls as well at home here in game three. All right, by the way, that Mavericks-T-Wolves game three is tomorrow night on Sunday. I will have a deep dive video, of course, Sunday morning for you. I know it's Memorial Day weekend, but I'm working each and every day for you. I've done every playoff game every day this postseason, and I will continue to do so. As long as you're watching, as long as you're finding it useful, I'll keep breaking down every NBA playoff game all the way through the finals. So check back tomorrow morning, Sunday, for game three of the West, Timberwolves and Mavericks. Be sure to click subscribe and hit the bell For an instant alert, you'll be alerted the minute the video goes live so you can be the first to watch and win with this free information. Don't forget, thumbs up is greatly appreciated. Click that thumbs up right now. Keeps the content free here on Wager Talk TV. And once again, comment below. Let me know your thoughts here on Game 3. How are you playing this Pacers-Celtic matchup on Saturday night? Sides, totals, any player props you like. And once again, if you are a veteran, current or past, please comment below and let me know so I can personally thank you because I read all the comments and I reply back. All right, we're going to get to some player props in a moment. Just a reminder, if you want my personal best bets for Saturday baseball and basketball, check them out on my page, Steve Merrill, wagertalk.com, and check out the free plays. They're literally the last cut each day for my best bet cards, so they're very strong opinions. Their games are just a bit outside. They've hit over 70% over the past week, the free plays alone, and it's a great way to build your bankroll this summer. Check out Saturday's free play right now, Steve Merrill, wagertalk.com. Get there quicker with shortcut wt.buzz/sm. While you're there, we do have the special by June, get the rest of May free. So if you like my best bets for this weekend and the rest of May for free, sign up right now for June. You get the rest of this month for free. So why delay? Every day you get on is an extra day you get for free the rest of May. All right, let's look at some player props. Now, obviously with Tyrese Halliburton, questionable, banged up, injured, makes the Indiana player props very difficult because you just don't know who's going to be playing. If Halliburton doesn't play, that increases the over chances for basically all the other starters. But one guy I like over regardless is Siakam. A couple reasons here. Keep in mind, he was traded from Toronto after they played five times this year, the Boston Celtics and the Pacers. They played five times because on December 4th, they played a play-in, a semifinal play-in, an in-season play-in tournament. 
play in or whatever you want to call it, the end season tournament, the semifinal game. So they had a fifth meeting because of that. But all five meetings took place before January 30th. That was the last of the five meetings. Siakam didn't join the club until afterwards. So although Halliburton is a big loss if he doesn't play, they do have a superstar playoff veteran in Siakam now. By the way, Halliburton missed the first game on November 1st. Uh, Boston won by 51 points, 259 total points. And uh, Halliburton also had only 13 minutes in the fourth meeting on January 8th. Indiana actually won that game, 133-131, 264 points. So you can see both games were extremely high scoring when Halliburton was out or limited earlier this year. But of course, Siakam's in the lineup now. Um, I think he could have a big game even if Halliburton plays. He'll still look to do the heavy lifting. And he had a nice game the other night, uh, 28 points. The problem, though, is he was 13 for 17 shooting, including 2 for 2 from 3-point range. He can't shoot any better and only got to 28, but he did have 24 in Game 1. He's priced at 22.5. He's had 22 or more now in four of his last five playoff games. And if Halliburton is announced out, uh, you might want to take a look then at Siakam player points over for Indiana. Um, as far as other guys that could pick up the heavy lifting, if Halliburton is out, obviously um, the other guards, for example, uh, Nimrod, I think, had 16. He was 6 for 12 shooting. Um, the Pacers, though, have really been shooting well. And as you know, I was kind of biased towards the under in Game 2. And Indiana, after shooting an NBA playoff record, 67% against the Knicks last Sunday, have now come back to shoot 54 and 52% the last two games. So it does concern me that they're due to regress a little bit, but they are back home. Um, so I think Siakam's probably the best overprop option, but a lot of uncertainty without knowing Halliburton's status. Let's look at some Celtics here. There is one Celtic I do like, and that is Jalen Brown under. He is definitely due to regress after scoring 40 points in Game 2. Uh, Tatum had only 23 points. Tatum was only 1 for 7 from 3-point range. So I do think a Tatum over, Jalen Brown under are both somewhat correlated. If we get one right, we're going to probably get them both right. Uh, Tatum is set at 29.5 points. He had only 23 in Game 2 after having 36 in Game 1. But I, my favorite prop in this game is Jalen Brown under 26 points. After that 40-point and 26-point effort in the first two games, I do think he's due to regress a little bit. And he's really due to cool off shooting, too. That's what you want to look at. When guys shoot extremely out of the box, a couple things happen. First of all, the opposing team looks to shut them down more. And also, they're due to cool off. And the fact they're changing venues here and going on the road where Indiana's a perfect 6-0 and straight up in the playoffs, you could definitely see Brown cooling off. Keep in mind, in Cleveland, the fifth game against Cleveland, he had only 11 points before the 26 and 40. Um, he was 50% shooting in Game 1. 52% shooting in Game 2, so he is definitely due for some regression. Jalen Brown under 26 points, I think, makes a lot of sense in Game 3 tonight on Saturday. Um, some other guys that are taking a lot of shots. In fact, Tatum and Brown took tw uh, 47 of their 88 shot attempts. A uh, Holiday, 15 points, but he was 6 for 7 shooting. Uh, can't take many more shots than that. Uh, Derek White, 8 for 15, 23 points. I mean, all these guys are really due to regress, so I think some Celtic unders could be worth a look. Jalen Brown would be my top recommendation under 26. Uh, the one I would stay away from playing under is Tatum. I don't like to fade superstars, especially after a suboptimal shooting performance. All right, that's your breakdown for Game 3. Pacers Celtics, 8.30 Eastern tonight on ABC. Lots of uncertainty with Halliburton's injury situation. Uh, if we see something throughout the day, I'll update the comments below. If you all see it, jump in there and let me know as well. I literally think we have the smartest, sharpest, and most intelligent sports betting viewers on the planet right here on Wager Talk TV. And if you're not only if you're not already part of the family, not part of the 153,000 plus subscribers, click subscribe right now and hit the bell as well for instant alerts when these playoff previews go up each and every morning here on Wager Talk TV. I read all the comments, I reply back. Once again, happy Memorial Day weekend. Enjoy the weekend. Enjoy the family, but most importantly, remember the great sacrifice that many Americans have made for centuries now to keep this country free and allow us to talk about sports betting and sports in general here on TV each and every day. So once again, comment below if you're active military, present or past, so I can give you a special thank you because I read all the comments and I reply back. And look, I'm going to be on the move Saturday. I'll be busy Memorial Day weekend as well. So if I don't get the comment in there right away, it doesn't mean I'm not going to read it and get to it. Hey, many of you read the comments and reply. Thank the veterans along with me. Let's see how many comments and how many thanks we can get to each veteran who comments below here, not only today on Saturday, but this weekend here on Wager Talk TV. Thumbs up, like. It really does do a great deal to help keep content free and plentiful. So click that thumbs up, like here on Wager Talk TV. And don't forget, if you want my official best bets for Saturday basketball and baseball, get them right now on my page, Steve Merrill, 
wagertalk.com, and you can get a free play each and every day, hitting over 70% this past week on the free baseball plays, and they continue to crush it for free. It's a last cut, strong opinion, great way to build your bankroll, and those best bets, of course, are my strongest plays. In fact, it's very simple. If I have a play, my clients get them. It doesn't matter if you do a weekly, a monthly, a seasonal, a one-day. Every client gets the same plays. There's just different durations. And if you want Saturday's best bets, you really should consider the June All Sports because you get the rest of May for free. We have the June special. We also have the Summer Slam special, which gets you all the way through Labor Day. That also includes the rest of May free. So this is a great time to get a baseball, basketball, all sports combo and get the rest of May, including Saturday's best bets for free. No promo codes needed. It's on my page right now, Steve Merrill, wagertalk.com. And I know many of you, hundreds of you already have the NBA playoff package because I gave you that special a few weeks ago. And oh, by the way, I'm number one this year and number one all time in the history of the NBA units one at Wager Talk. We've cashed Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. We missed game one with the Celtics, but we came back. We're perfect 3-0 and so far in games one and two, the Mavs, T-Wolves, and the Celtics game two. So we're 3-1 and so far in the conference finals, including cashing last night with the over in game two between Dallas and Minnesota. So 3-1 and in the conference finals. Plenty more best bets to come over the next month in the NBA. If you already have the NBA playoffs, Message Wager Talk customer support. Let them know that you want to add baseball, and they will give you a special discount. Mention that you heard Steve Merrill's video, his NBA video, and he told you to contact customer support and ask for the special baseball discount for all of you that already have the playoff package. If you don't, consider that all sports. Get June, get the rest of May free right now. Steve Merrill, wagertalk.com. Get there quicker, along with that daily free play with shortcut wt.buzz slash sm. Follow me on Twitter, X, whatever you want to call it, Follow me on X at Steve Merrill, two R's, one L. Twitter X, follow me at Steve Merrill. And I'm also on Instagram. You can follow me on IG along with Wager Talk. Have a great Memorial Day weekend. I'll be back here Sunday morning with your Game 3 Mavs T-Wolves preview. Like, subscribe, and comment below. And stay tuned here to Wager Talk TV for more great baseball and basketball previews coming up next.